You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of No More Future. So the last place we left off, we were still having like a little bit of a chat with Nats and Mary. So let's pick it back up where we left off. Oh yeah, apparently they've been waiting for a syn for a synthetic that can uh, that can uh, have an ability. Very interesting. I wonder why they're waiting for that. I guess we might find out in this video. But anyway, guys, sit back and enjoy. Let me change you the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in, shall we? Alarm saying you're up. Let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Young Labrador is at first surprised by her boss's request, but she ultimately agrees with a beaming look on her face. Of course. Y you know you can always count on me for these kinds of things. Huh. So I take it you're the resident expert on abilities or something. Pretty much, yeah. I studied them in depth at college for some extra credits, so I can give you a brief overview if you'd like me to. So she's somewhat knowledgeable in abilities. You can't say you're too surprised, truth be told. After all, she had she had to have learned how to answer your and your cousin's questions yesterday from somewhere. You have to admit, this is pretty intriguing. Go right on ahead. I'm curious to see where this goes. Awesome, and thanks! So to answer your question, we should probably start from a century or so ago. A century? Why would she... No. You have a feeling that you know exactly where the feline wants to land. Starting from all the way to the shift, I imagine. <clears throat> young woman smiles before continuing her speech, evidently content with your foreknowledge of the topic. Yes, all the way there. I assumed you learned about that in school at some point or another. Only the bare minimum. Our history curriculum slowed down considerably after the turn of the millennia. Or rather, sped up so fast it was impossible to learn anything. Mary can't help but reply to your comments in disgust. Of course it would. Public schooling's just the worst, isn't it? Look who's talking! You never even attended public school, or any school for that matter. She didn't, but then how did Mary become so smart? Probably not something you should ask in the middle of an entirely separate conversation, you reason. And Mary appears to have figured that out as well. Ha! Huh. Touché. But I should shut up before I let this rant degenerate even further. I don't want to steal the spotlight from Natalie again. After some more huffing and pouting, as is typical of the extremely emotional Labrador, Natalie quickly returns to where she let all left off. Well, seeing as though you're a little unprepared, would you mind a quick refresher? Of course, the floor is yours. Awesome, I'm happy to see you so excited. Now, I know this is going to sound a little dramatic, but everything sort of happened in the span of less than a minute. Humans all over the world suddenly and inexplicably mutated into non-human animal hybrids, what we now refer to as humans. And when I say suddenly and inexplicably, I truly mean that. The incident is one of the greatest mysteries of our generation for a reason. I see. Do you know what caused it? Nobody does. There are quite a few theories as to how it originated, but none of them were ever proven. Some say a science project gone terribly haywire, others a virus of unknown origin. Some still believe in alien intervention, or in a natural phenomenon similar to global warming or an ice age. A furry age? <laughs> oh no, it's worse than a global... A global. It's worse... It's worse than a global catastrophe. It's the furry age. That, that sounds better to me. But these are all theories, and none of them have were ever confirmed. You eagerly await further elucidations from your canine handler, but after some time spent in total silence, you realize at some point that this is literally it. That's it? That's all you can say about it? Not even you can hide the dissatisfaction in your voice right now, and neither can Natalie. Hey, if we knew anything more about what happened, it wouldn't be a mystery. I'm sorry if you were expecting more from me. If I knew anything else, I'd tell you. So it would seem. If this truly is it, then it's not too far from what you learned about the shift in class yourself. You always wonder what it must have felt like while growing up, to one day wake up and realize that your body's now totally different from before. Or maybe to realize that while going to school or to work, or while looking at your mom or your dad or your child, it must have been a nightmare. You try to get back to your conversation with Natalie, hoping to leave those dark thoughts behind. So what does it have to do with abilities? Well, after the shift occurred, it didn't take long for abilities to pop up as well. The realization was slow, as this change only affected a very small amount of people. But once these users figured out that they had superpowers, the rest of the world soon found out as well. That too doesn't sound like it went over well. The past sure is a scary place. All of a sudden, Mary butts in with conversation once again. Well, we can definitely say that the shift and the abilities have one thing in common. Neither of them makes one lick of sense. There are no biological or genetic explanations behind why a person is born looking like this or that animal. Real or fantastical, it's practically a lottery. That's true. None of my relatives look anything alike, and I can say the same for most of my friends. 
Well, no exceptions aside, but even then, siblings like Nira, Nimurin, and Yumi, looking nearly identical to one another, are extremely rare. That's the thing! To, to this day, the logic behind the system continues to elude us. And the same can be said about abilities, like one's outward appearance. It's impossible pr pr to predict at birth whether someone has an ability or not. And unless they involve some changes to their user's body, they're not even detectable by modern instruments. They're certainly real, but to our tools they might as well not be. So abilities are an anomaly even by modern scientific standards. You can't help but wonder how prudent it was to focus on some exploring synthetics before abilities or the shift. But maybe that's exactly why the Labrador brought this up to begin with. Is this why you're so interested in them? Both Mary and Natalie smile at your fast deduction. My personal theory is that both of these things don't have a biological explanation, but a metaphysical one. That the logic that dictates whether one is born a cat or a dog, with or without an ability, isn't stored in their brain or DNA, but someplace else entirely. A metaphysical explanation? Something that resides on a plane other than the physical one. Does she truly mean... You're thinking the soul, aren't you? cat quietly chuckles under her breath as her grin grows bigger and bigger, evidently feeling rather excited by this theory. It'd explain everything, wouldn't it? Including but not limited to yourself. After all, if a synthetic can retain their ability post-transition or develop a new one altogether, then surely that means that their identity was retained as well. And that would prove once and for all to synthetics and humans alike that the transition really works. Right on, Isaac. That's precisely it. It's not one of our top priorities right now, but I'm sure you would understand how finding a synthetic that can use abilities would boost our research to the next level. Honestly, I'm surprised. I didn't think you'd catch up to this quick without to this I didn't think you'd catch up this quick with this reasoning of mine, given how unorthodox the logic behind it is. You cut up with Mary's reasoning rather quickly. True, but that doesn't make this hypothesis of hers any less insane. Trying to connect the shift abilities and even your very soul to some metaphysical realm beyond your understanding is Something you, ex something you expected your religious parents to do. Definitely not a real scientist like Mary. I like this is extremely unordinary from a mad researcher before you. Of all things she's striving to prove, this might not even be the craziest. Not like it even matters at this point. You already did entrust her with your very existence for the sake of this project. If this is what it takes to prove to both yourself and the world that you exist, well, so be it. That said, I imagine that if you're asking about this, you haven't had much luck so far. Yep, from what I've heard, even those with developed abilities before their transition have yet to recover them. Which probably doesn't do wonders for their morale, if I had to guess. Yeah, if I reacted so poorly to losing my natural senses, I can imagine what they must have felt upon realizing that they lost another important part of themselves. Hey, we don't know if they lost it yet. Things might just work a little differently between humans and, synth and synthetics is all. We're in no rush. We'll figure all this out, some t we'll figure all this out, ti out in time. We do have eternity to play with, after all. That's true indeed. You always forget that your life is not a deadline anymore. Things are, that are unclear now might not stay that way forever. The march of science is, is an endless one, and you'll have the opportunity to witness it firsthand. You're not sure whether the prospects of that makes you excited or afraid. All of a sudden, the Siamese suddenly sprawls her arms to the sky as though she just woke. Anyway, that's everything that needed to be said for now. Man, I'm exhausted. Feels like I've been talking for two days already. Hey, I did most of the talking at the end there. Besides, even before I took over for you, that was barely 20 minutes. And before that, half an hour at best. Hey, don't act like that's not a big deal. Human throats weren't designed to be used for this long. Just look at Jasper. His speeches last forever, and now he sounds like a villain from a Saturday morning cartoon. You do recall the Drake's voice sounding rather dry the last few times you met him. Does he truly speak as often as the feline claims he does? Nonetheless, it's clear that Mary is done with this topic for the time being. A little bit of a shame. You were hoping that she could answer a few more questions for you. So, I take it you need a break? And a long one, too. Maybe we can continue this conversation at a lunch table somewhere, after a bottle of water or two. That could work. It wouldn't be too uncouth to mention that stuff relating to the monster you saw earlier in the day at a lunch table. Might even be able to pass it off as something you read on the NVIDIA news or something, so she doesn't, so she doesn't get suspicious. Plus, you still need to tell her about Nim's request from yesterday. You can't forget to ask her if it's alright to livestream with your friend before the end of the day. No, oh, we're going out for lunch? Oh, I'm so down for that. I am practically starving here. Oh, right, lunch. You got so caught up with your plans, you once again forgot that you were just about to do... Well, you know what? I'm not exactly hungry, but I'd love to join you girls if you'll have me. Of course. I've been looking forward to this ever since meeting you the other day. And so is Mary. The Siamese turns the other way to avoid meeting her gaze, an embarrassed smirk on her face. 
Now, now, let's not get too excited. We still need to decide the rest the restaurant we're going to. The restaurant, huh? I can't say I know many around these parts. Well, you won't be starving for choices, I assure you. This side of the town has famous restaurants with backgrounds from all over the world. The French place is always a great choice, but I'm personally feeling very tied today. And then again, there was an Ethiopian eatery that just opened the other day. So many choices indeed, half of which you never got the chance to try back when you were alive. How are you supposed to choose? The moment you settle on one cuisine, it's as though you're forsaking all the others. Well, it's easy. You have one one day, and then you have one the next. <laughs> or maybe just being overly dramatic again. Yes, man, think about it. Yeah, he, he, Isaac's got to get into that uh, frame of mind that he's basically got unlimited time now. Yeah, he can afford to be patient. What is it about people who are immortal being impatient? Jeez. <laughs> What if we just went and grabbed a pizza instead? A pizza? Wait, that's right. That's what we agreed to have we'd have on our first meal together, didn't we? Yep, I'm so glad you remember. Like I said, I've been looking forward to this moment. My mom always told me that you can learn so much from someone just by watching how they eat. Hmm. I really hope you're not you're not going to spend all your time staring at me while your pizza gets cold. <laughs> She's probably just messing around, you reason, but the thought of someone watching you eat from the close up just feels wrong for some reason. Mary, on the other hand, finds Natalie's remark in your response absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Goodness, you two really are children sometimes. Like I'm complaining, I always did have a soft spot for kids. I came with these jokes about your youth. Even coming from someone her age, it still feels a little weird for some reason. Either way, at least she f seems fine with your choice of location. So, pizza's good with you two? Of course. You should know, I don't really mind where I eat so long as the food tastes good. The biggest issue would be if they start throwing a hissy fit as soon as they realize you're with us, but I'm sure we'll find a way to get them to look the other way. That would be bothersome indeed. You could still recall how people were looking at you looking at you when you went to Daphne's cafe yesterday. Hopefully Mary's right, and things calm, calm down as soon as people realize she's with you. Well then, if we're all set, we can start heading out. I already found the perfect place, too. It's this super sweet Italian place on Eve's Avenue called... <sighs> oh god, okay, I have to do Jasper's voice going somewhere. <laughs> oh, goody. A familiar dragon appears from the stairs leading to the second floor, taking all three of you by surprise. His expression is as serious as ever, but his pose denotes an even greater level of impatience than usual. Obviously, Mary's not all too pleased to see her superior here. Not that I blame her, Jesus. What are you doing here? I was looking for you, of course, and as usual, I had to scour the whole building to find you. And you didn't think to look here first. The Drake rolls his eyes at the Siamese's ironic quarry, evidently not in the mood to deal with her unique brand of humor. It was fourth on the list. First was your office, then the meeting room on the twelfth floor, and the lobby. I'd rather have found you anywhere else, honestly. This place creeps me out. Judging from the woman's expression, she seems to have taken that last remark of his rather personally. Who does this guy think he is? To dismiss her entire work so rudely? You already knew that Jasper could be difficult, but... Either way, I'll need to bar you in the synthetic for an important meeting right now. An important meeting? Normally you wouldn't mind if the request came from Mary or someone else under her, but given that it's coming from him, you can't help but feel a little more than, a little more than unsettled. Luckily, Mary always has your back. She advances towards the Drake courageously, unwilling to let him waltz into her laboratory and announce and do as she pleases. I'm sorry, but I don't recall you scheduling any such meetings with me or Isaac in the last few days. And you know I'm on a very tight timetable right already. Besides, we're leaving for lunch right now, so unless this is really important, we'll... Oh, but it is important. Extremely important, in fact. It's the owners. They're ready to see us right now. The entire second floor goes dead silent upon hearing Jasper's words. Mary first and foremost. She might not look as scared as you are, but the feline's eyes betray her stupor and uncertainty. Uh, the, the, uh, the owners? Already? Oh, dear. Oh, spaghetti -o. You board the elevator alongside Mary and Jasper, leaving your friend Natalie behind in the laboratory. Though she tries to follow along at first, mostly out of politeness, Jasper's insistence on this being a private meeting quickly proves enough to dissuade her. She shares with you an encouraging smile and a friendly wave, a last courtesy before your sudden departure. Then the doors suddenly close and your slow ascent begins. You feel a deadly mixture of fear and anxiety building up inside you as your very legs threaten to give out. Judging from Jasper's expression, he's definitely not bringing you in front of the owners to sing your praises, not like you ever expected him to anyway. 
In fact, considering how, rea how he reacted to finding out that you'd been involved in a fight yesterday, you fully anticipate you'll be torn to a you'll be torn a new one and then some. And that's probably the best case scenario to boot. Noticing the grim look on your face, Mary tries to comfort you as best she can. Don't worry, Isaac. You're going to be fine. We're just going to have a brief talk to the owners, and then you're free to go. Easy as that. Vedric scoffs at the Siamese's remarks, but what you assume is, uh, is his way of showing disagreement. Are you sure about that? Of course I am. I'm always sure. Still, I can't say I blame you for being worried. It's only natural, really. But as long as you stay calm, quiet, and by my side, you'll come out of this just fine. You want me to be quiet? Uh, what if they ask something of me? Then you reply as briefly and calmly as you can. But even then, I'd recommend letting me do most of the talking. I have more experience dealing with them than you do, after all. So trust me, and everything will be alright. As much as you'd like to do just that, you can't bring yourself to fully commit to your friend's optimism. After all, you have no idea what sort of people these owners are. You're, you're clueless as to what sort of attitude they hold towards synthetics and towards you. But with them being at the, end of, at the head of Pandora, they must certainly have enough power to impact Mary's entire project. Jasper at least seems to think so. Enough power to figuratively and literally pull the plug on you. Ah, uh, there you go again. Stop looking so glum. I said you're going to be fine. You have nothing to fear from this meeting, I promise. The Drake gets awfully close to laughing once again, finally inviting the ire of the scientist. Well, at least someone here is having fun. Am I? I disagree. I was just thinking about what Bradbury said yesterday. I think he's right. You do make a lot of promises you can't keep. Jasper's words are like a cold poison, sending shivers down your spine as they slowly make their way into your head, casting doubts wherever, wherever they seep. Mary must have built up resistance to them over time, however, as her reaction is much less submissive and a lot more ferocious. You can act as cocky as you want. If you won't make you, it won't make you any less wrong. If you think your arguments will be enough to stop me, you're sorely mistaken. Had the owners been interested in getting rid of me, they would have done so a long time ago. So go ahead, make your funky little speech and see where that leads you. It's only our time you're wasting, after all. The Drake merely shakes his head at the scientist's comments, looking entirely unimpressed. <laughs> you have the gall to call me cocky. After everything you and your synthetic pulled, you'll be lucky if you still get to keep your job. Where is that thing? Uh, you'll be lucky if he gets to come out of that room outside of a dumpster, is what you imagine he'll say, and for once you can't say you entirely disagree with that assessment. If the owners end up agreeing that your actions, although not necessarily illegal, are a threat to their company's reputation, you don't expect things to end up well for you in the slightest. Just before the, just before the dragon can say that, Mary quiets him down once again. He'll come out of it just fine. Now stop trying to scare him and go back to rehearsing whatever dumb speech you have ready for the occasion, asshole. You can hear something crack as Jasper's fist tightens up like a vice, instilling even more fear in your metaphorical heart. Scratch that. When I'm done with you today, you won't even have a house left. You're lucky that Mary doesn't seem all that bothered by the Drake's vi venomous threats, given how easily his tone of voice alone paralyzed you utterly. You're not sure whether her open defiance in front of her fiery superior is born of courage, wisdom, or sheer foolishness, but at the very least she's managed to retain a clear head in spite of all the pressure. As for you, it appears as though all you can do is rest your hopes with the unruly Siamese and pray that she somehow manages to get you out of the upcoming meeting unscathed. We've arrived. The elevator door is finally open after what felt like an eternity to a spacious, grandiose room you've never seen before. The Drake leaves first, followed by the scientist. And then, regrettably, by you. Alright guys, I'm going to pause it right there. It seems like a good enough place. Man, this is a... Uh, really? I'd say this is a very egotistical room. Like, this room just... This is this room is inhabited by people who think, like, we're, we're, we're the best there is. Like, this room should reflect how high up we are over everyone else, including that little big-ass fucking chair right there. I like the whole design here. Man, this is a... Uh, God, this kind of makes me think of like neo, neo maybe neo Egyptian mixed with like a little bit of Greek. Yeah, I, hmm, interesting. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. And until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.